So this suit is one of the biggest legal threats that the gun rights group has ever faced. The National Rifle Association accusing New York's attorney general of carrying out a political vendetta. My money is on the NRA. You can no more kill the NRA than you could stop the sun from rising in the east. There's a battle going on right now to make the National Rifle Association disappear. And it might work. Earlier this year, the NRA made a pretty big announcement. New today, the National Rifle Association filed for bankruptcy. This was both shocking and also not. On the one hand, the NRA has been struggling. 2018 saw the group with a $36 million deficit, and the year after, its membership revenue hit a seven-year low. But the bankruptcy was surprising to, well, a lot of the NRA. According to court testimony, most of the organization's board members, and its then chief financial officer, and even its general counsel, all people you'd think would know about filing for bankruptcy, didn't, until the paperwork had been filed. What made it even weirder was that the NRA said it was doing great. It even argued in bankruptcy court that it could pay all its debts. The whole thing seemed to have dark, ulterior motives. Actually, they weren't that ulterior, seeing as the NRA vice president spelled them out on TV. Chapter 11 of the bankruptcy code allows individuals and companies to reorganize. Uh, so we use that to allow us to uh, file in Texas. So the NRA was really just using it as a way to close up shop, head down south, and start all over. And that plan was met with a lot more fanfare than your typical bankruptcy filing. The NRA announced they're gonna dump New York and reincorporate in the great state of Texas. Okay, okay, maybe Representative Jim Jordan slouching like a varsity athlete in the back of high school math class, isn't the best hype man. Let's try again. Perhaps somebody with more gravitas. Let me say to the NRA, welcome to Texas. We are thrilled to have the great National Rifle Association coming to the great state of Texas. All right, well, you work with what you got. As much symbolism as there might be in the gun rights group moving to the Lone Star State, the NRA was really moving in an attempt to escape New York, where it's been chartered since 1871. More specifically, it was running from her, Letitia James, Attorney General of the State of New York. James swore a blood oath against the NRA on the campaign trail, calling it, quote, an organ of deadly propaganda, masquerading as a charity. Last year, she filed a lawsuit accusing the NRA of doing a lot more than just trying to make sure we can all go to the grocery store strapped like Dirty Harry. I know what you're thinking, punk. You're thinking, did he fire six shots or only five? James's lawsuit alleges that NRA executives have spent years using the nonprofit as a, quote, personal piggy bank. The group denied that and called the lawsuit unconstitutional. In an email to its donors, the group also called it a gross weaponization of legal and regulatory power. It also said that it complies with board policies and accounting controls and vowed to continue the fight for freedom. But James says the group has strayed very far from that freedom fight. So far, in fact, that it needs to be dissolved. Completely. Like, no more NRA. Poof. By declaring bankruptcy, the NRA would have been able to, if you'll forgive the metaphor, dodge that bullet. But that got a lot harder in May, when the whole scheme imploded. Harlan Hale, a federal bankruptcy judge in Dallas, Texas, with a real gunslinging cowboy name, dismissed the group's request for Chapter 11 protection in the state, saying it was acting in bad faith. There's still room for an appeal, but right now, it looks like the group is gonna have to face Letitia James, and whatever evidence she's got. And it seems like she's got a lot. It's clear that the NRA has been failing to carry out its stated mission for many, many years and instead has operated as a breeding ground for greed, abuse, and brazen illegality. She's mostly talking about this guy, NRA Executive Vice President and mouthpiece, Wayne LaPierre. Demand truth and justice. Stand and fight with the NRA. Funny thing about America's top gun advocate, 
he leads a group that markets to manly, rugged gun guys, even though he's anything but. And James says he's been using NRA money to fund his very fancy lifestyle. One of the methods alleged in James's lawsuit involved LaPierre hiding personal expenses thanks to his relationship with Angus McQueen, the co-founder of the NRA's longtime ad and PR agency, Ackerman McQueen. In a 2019 deposition, lawyers asked LaPierre to explain nearly $300,000 in payments from Ackerman McQueen to the luxury brand Emerna Gilder Zania over 14 years. According to the deposition transcript, LaPierre's response didn't have the heteronormative bravado he's known for. Here's how it went down. Angus told me, Wayne, get wardrobe. Go get wardrobe. Angus actually set up the billing. But let me just say, you're a big boy, right? Yes. You can make your own decisions about what clothes you need and what clothes you don't need. You've been dressing yourself for a number of years. Wow, that was rude. That would shut me right up. But it didn't stop LaPierre. There was a period where Angus wanted me in light suits because he thought that women responded better in light suits. There was another period of time where he thought my suits were outdated because style, well, style had changed. There were also the two times LaPierre hid out on a 108-foot yacht. The first was after 20 first graders and six school employees were shot and killed in Sandy Hook. The second was when 17 people were shot and killed at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. He said he took to the yacht, which included a cook, a motorboat, and a pair of sea dews for his personal safety. According to a court transcript, he said, quote, This was the one place that I hope could feel safe, where I remember getting there going, Thank God I'm safe. Nobody can get me here. Which makes you wonder whether America's epidemic of mass shootings might not be solved by fewer guns, so much as more boats, big boats, floating in the Caribbean, serving those drinks with little umbrellas in them, where we could all feel safe from the raging gun violence back home. The icing on the cake here that the lawsuit says he had a post-employment contract where he'd get paid more than a million dollars every year until 2030. And to get that payout, all he had to do was agree not to accept another CEO appointment. It's not like he isn't getting paid a salary by the NRA, of around a million dollars a year. These were all just tasty little treats on top. It wasn't even just LaPierre getting these perks. According to James' lawsuit, his wife was getting tens of thousands of dollars in hair and makeup services. Even if the group is able to make it through James's suit, it's unlikely they're going to be unscathed. Because this isn't the only lawsuit against the NRA. Washington, D.C.'s Attorney General is also suing the NRA Foundation, the group's charitable arm, for being charitable to the NRA. When the NRA found itself running short on cash, it allegedly leaned on its foundation for two loans of $5 million on terms that favored the NRA, which is the thing you can do when you control the foundation you're borrowing from. The NRA has been so influential for so long, it's hard to imagine America without it. And they still wield an outsized influence. In 2020, their PAC raised more than $23 million. And in a few months, the Supreme Court is going to hear a case backed by the NRA, which could massively expand the right to carry concealed handguns. And it's basically a law of physics that any mention of gun regulations will be met with an opposite reaction from the NRA. She's not just liberal, she's radical. Too radical for Georgia. Defend yourself. Defeat Stacey Abrams. Liberal justices oppose your rights, and Joe Donnelly is on their side. The NRA and sheriffs, deputies, and police agree. Defeat Andrew Gillum. So dissolving the NRA wouldn't suddenly let President Joe Biden start taking away people's AR-15s. It wouldn't stop mass shootings or keep other gun-loving dudes from forming a whole new group in their place. But it would, perhaps for just a moment, set America's best organized gun advocates back on their heels. Maybe even allow for an election cycle or two that aren't showered in the NRA's millions. And maybe give Congress a chance to think about America's epidemic of gun violence without the NRA standing right there behind them. Maybe just for a moment. And then, who knows? Thank you.